So after switching from Adobe Premiere Elements to Adobe Premiere Pro, everything is going smoothly except for one thing, and that is the amount of lag I get while I edit the video. As you can see here, when I move an image on screen to a specific location, it takes around three whole seconds for it to actually move over. Now I suspect that it has to do with my bad graphics card, which currently is an AMD Radeon 7500 series, which is around $20 on Newegg, and it's a very low quality graphics card. So to fix that, I've got myself a better graphics card. All right, so my new graphics card arrived. Let's open it. Yup, it is a GTX 1060 EVGA Superclocked Edition. Now you see me unboxing the actual inner box. Um, funny thing is, is that I opened it from the wrong side and I started ripping out the little partition when I realized I could have gone from the other side. Now you might be wondering, why did I choose the EVGA Superclocked Edition when there's so many other ones out there that might actually look cooler than the Superclocked Edition? It actually turns out that if you're paying for one of those huge GTX 1060s with like a three fan setup, you're really not paying for any more performance. You're just paying for the potential for performance because the GTX 1060 is a chip made by NVIDIA. And this chip is the same. The companies that put this chip in their graphics card just put the chip in and put the supplemental components on. So with the cards with the three fan models, you're just paying for the overclocking ability of that card. So that brings us to the hardware part of the build. So the installation went okay, but there were a few mishaps along the way. So that brings me to the pro tips I'm about to tell you that will make your graphics card installation much smoother than mine. So the first pro tip is to actually install your graphics card with the motherboard perpendicular to the ground, or in most cases, with your computer in its normal running position. Now, your normal intuition would be to flip the computer so the motherboard is lying flat, but it turns out it's actually harder to install your graphics card that way. Second pro tip, this graphics card, the GTX 1060, 1070, and 1080, will take up two of the expansion slots in the back of your computer. So be prepared, you're going to have to knock out one more of the expansion slots. Now don't cut out the metal divider in between the two expansion slots because the engineers at EVGA or whatever company has made sure that that metal divider will not interfere with any of the ports in the back of the graphics card. Third pro tip, remember your power connector. Your old graphics card might not have needed a power connector from your power supply, but this GTX brand graphics card need either a 6-pin or an 8-pin power connector from your power supply because it's so powerful. Last pro tip, when you power on your machine and you hear a series of beeps coming from your motherboard and not a single beep, don't panic. There's nothing really wrong, it just means that you seeded in your graphics card not perfectly, which means there's probably a bit of dust between the connection. So simply take out your graphics card, wipe it down with like a damp cloth, and then put it back in. Software installation. This is actually a very easy process, and all you have to do is pop the included software installation disk that came with your graphics card, and follow instructions on screen. It's that simple. However, usually the disks that came with your graphics card do not contain the most upgraded drivers because they've usually been sitting in a warehouse for the past few months, and in those past few months, the drivers would have updated in the real world. And so what you have to do is click on the application that NVIDIA puts on your desktop if you chose that option, and then it will prompt you to install the most upgraded drivers. This is the best bet because they will always provide optimizations. But then we came to a problem. After installing this great graphics card, giving me a solid 73 frames per second on Furmark, it's still not making Premiere run any better. It is still really laggy movement, really bad playback, and rendering takes more than two hours. And so I thought, what is the problem? So after looking at a lot of online sources and looking at my actual task manager, I figured out the problem. Every time I render, my CPU goes to 100% and even starts a thermal throttle. So why am I using CPU instead of GPU? Now, why is it a big problem, you ask me? Why can't the CPU render things just as quickly as the GPU? 
Well, this actually has to do with the basic hardware architecture of the GPU and CPU. Well, so the GPU has a lot of physical cores. For example, in mine, as I mentioned before, it has more than a thousand cores. And a CPU, for example mine, only has four physical cores. So why does a GPU have so many cores while the CPU has so little cores? Well, it turns out that this analogy might help you. Think about the GPU as many, many, many unskilled factory workers. And think about the CPU as four people who have PhD degrees. They are definitely outnumbered by the factory workers, but each individual person can perform better than even a group of the factory workers. Now these factory workers uh, can be trained to do specific things over and over and over again. And that is what the GPU can do. The GPU is actually very, very good at doing very simple arithmetic and simple math, including matrix flipping and vector calculation, which is pretty much what gives you textures and basically all graphics on your games. Now, if you use a CPU to render things, it's basically asking one of those PhD people to do simple math. And they can do it, but their lack of people makes the CPU highly inefficient at doing these things. So it turns out, after a lot of research, that Premiere Pro only supports certain graphics card, but they only support a lot of very high-end server graphics card and some outdated graphics card like the GTX Titan. So I am about to tell you how to get around this Adobe Premiere Pro support issue. It's actually a very simple deal. Adobe Premiere Pro supports cards that are in a specific text file in the Adobe Premiere Pro directory in your C drive. Adobe Premiere Pro will only work with specific graphics cards that are declared in a text file in its directory on the C drive. Now we can just put our graphics card uh, declaration in a text file and put it directly in a directory and have it work. So here is how we do it. You have to just simply exit out of Premiere Pro, create a new text document, and name it CUDA underscore supported underscore cards. And in that text file, we just have to put GForce and then a single space, capital GTX, and then another space, and then your model. So for me it's 1060, but you could have the 1070 or the 1080. So then you have your finished text file. You go to your C drive, you click on program files, and you click on Adobe, and then you click on the software which is Adobe Premiere Pro CC and followed by the year. And then in there you drag your supported cards file or the TXT file into that directory directly. Now after a relaunch Adobe Premiere Pro, you simply have to click File, Project Settings, and General. And after you click on that, the previously shaded drop-down menu should be not shaded anymore. So you click on that, and you, have, you click on GPU Acceleration, and in parentheses, CUDA. And now if you click on it and you click Apply, you'll see instantly things change. For example, the red rendering indicator will usually turn to yellow. And that is because the GPU is now able to handle so many more tasks, it will render the timeline for you. So if you follow these instructions correctly, you should have a very, very nice performing Adobe Premiere Pro. You will no longer have any lag when you move things around, and you can add pretty much any effect you want and as much color correction as you want without completely bogging down your performance. For those of you who didn't really catch the things I said in this video, the entire documentation and how-to is on my website, which is also listed in the description.